Oh no! I think I'm gonna be late. My bike's broken. Oh, yeah. Hey, girls and boys. Welcome back to the big Bible adventure. Week four. Ah, oh, we have been learning some fantastic things. We've been learning that the Bible is one great big story and it points us to Jesus. We've been learning about the book of Genesis and some fantastic truths in it. And you know, I got that sidekick Pete, but Pete's always late. But today I'm gonna be late because my bike's broken and I need rescuing. Cause look, look what I've got to get past. <coughs> Oh. I'm really scared. I'm not a big fan of dogs myself. And ooh, I got to get past that. And I don't know who's going to rescue me. And, and I'm going to be late. Hmm. Well, while I'm waiting to figure that out, can you remember some of the things that we've been learning so far? Yeah, we learned at the very first week, from the very beginning of the book of Genesis. We learned, maybe this will help you remember, that God is king because he created everything. And so we need to listen to him. And then we moved on to Genesis three. Yeah, we had the snake that Pete didn't like. And we learned that the world spoiled because we've sinned, but there was good news that God promised a snake crusher. And we needed to look forward to that. And then last week, in our camping trip, we had a star. And we learned that God had promised to fix the world. And so we need to believe his promises. And that's really great news. And all three of those stories have taken place in the book of Genesis. Well, today, in our adventure, we're gonna fast forward we're gonna move through a whole bunch of the books of the Bible to get to something in 1 Samuel. So just to set the scene, we had Abraham, and Abraham had a son, and then he had a son, and he had a son, and then a great big nation was born, the nation of Israel, God's special people. And lots of things happened to them, but now we're getting to the part in the story where they want a king, and they have a king, and he's not a very good king, but there's a promise of a better king. And we're gonna learn more about that, but I still need to be rescued. And while I'm waiting, why don't you listen to this song? Yeah, keep learning those books of the Bible. Keep learning the books of the Old Testament. So have a listen to this. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, that's the Old Testament. Sing it again! Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, that's 
That's the Old Testament. Sing it again, Genesis. No, wait. Sorry, Dad. Exodus. We don't sing it again. Yeah, you know, it goes to the wrong. Remember? We only Joshua. sing it twice, not a third time. No, you know, the song keeps going. Oh, Dad. We just sing it again. And it's over. I oh, hope you enjoyed that song, but I'm still here, and I still need to be rescued from that dog because my allergies, I got to get past the dog, and I'm late. Oh, Pete! Pete! Hey, Maria. Pete, can, can you rescue me? Can you help me? What do you need rescue me from? What's from, from the dog. I can't get past the dog. Oh, this is cute little thing. Hello, dog. Hey, hey, come here. Yeah. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he's so fluffy. Oh, you're getting him. Yeah, let's go. Let's go away. Come on. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. Ah, oh, Pete, thanks, because I mean, my allergies are just so bad. And, and getting past that dog is... Yeah, I needed rescuing, and you rescued me. I saved you. I, so that's what I... Because, you see, I was late as well. Yeah. Then clearly you're you're late every boy. week. You're late yeah. every week. Yeah, so yeah. I was a bit surprised. I didn't know what was going on, but you needed to save me. Rescue, yep, okay. I need a rescue. Yeah. Oh, and my bike's broken too. Do you think you can help oh, me fix that? Can you yeah, rescue can my bike? Can rescue your bike. Yeah, we got it. Oh, we got it. fantastic! It is so great because we are now on week four yes. of the Big Bible Adventure. It's amazing. Can you remember some of the things you've learned? Well, I'm getting better at it. Cause yep. First week was God's king because He made everything. That's right. So listen to Him, and then the week after that was. The, the snake, this snake, it's not real. I not know real. it's not real. Not real. Not real. And it's, uh, yeah, we, we spoiled the world because we've sinned, but that means we need to look to the snake crusher. That's right. And last week when we last were camping. Week, we were camping, it was great. We got to see all the stars, and we remembered that God has promised to fix the world that we have spoiled. Yeah. So believe in the promise. That's right. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, thing is, though, is that you've just rescued me. Yeah. But... I look at you, and no offense, Pete, which usually means I'm going to offend you, but yeah. um, you don't look like a superhero. Is that because is that I've been late and I was a bit smelly last week? Yeah, like yeah. You don't remind me of, you know, a big, strong rescuer. You know. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. But, you know, I did rescue you. I did save you. You did. And I'm really grateful for that because you know what that means? We can get on with the adventure. We can get on the adventure. Let's go. Let's go. Pete! Pete, look! I think I think it's there! This is an object, isn't it? Let's oh, get it. Let's go look! Let's go look! Ooh! Oh, what is it? I, I don't know. Oh, it's just some just some rocks. What are these? Some some stones. Oh, and the wall's falling down. Oh no, you shouldn't build it on stone, shouldn't they? But Yeah. Why why rocks? What has rocks got to do with a big Bible adventure? I have no idea. Maybe it's because of the sound they make? Maybe. Uh, I don't think so. But, oh, look. Oh. There's another oh. CD. Oh, wait. I've, I've got the player. I've got the player. Let's put it in and find out. We're going to read from 1 Samuel, chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war and assembled at Sokol in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephes Damin between Sokol and Azekar. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the Valley of Elah and drew up their battle lines to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley between them. A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. He was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet on his head and he wore a coat of scaly armour of bronze weighing 5,000 shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and a bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed 600 shekels. His shield bearer was ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. 
But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, this day I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistine's words, Saul and the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Meanwhile, the Philistine, with his shield bearer in front of him, kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. Am I a dog? that you come at me with sticks. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today, I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you all into our hands. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine and killed him. David ran and stood over him. He took hold of the Philistine's sword and drew it from the scabbard. After he killed him, he cut off his head with the sword. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they turned and ran. Wow, that was an interesting Bible reading. It makes me stones. It does. Oh. Still quite a bit I don't understand, though. I've got more questions from that than before. Yeah. Oh, you stopped this too early. Yeah, oh, you no. did. Yeah. Oh. Let's watch some more. Let's see what it finishes with. Good morning or afternoon, depending on when you're tuning in to join us on a big Bible adventure. Now, this week we're looking at who will save. So far we've looked at God's made the world, uh, God's king of the world, we have disobeyed him and not listened to him and that he's, that wasn't the end of the story, that God made big promises to Abraham and since we were with Abraham last week, uh, God's people have grown, the Israelites have grown hugely in number and not just in number, they now have a huge army but this week we are looking at God's army up against an even bigger army the Philistines, and in particular, a man named Goliath. And who will save the Israelites from Goliath? Now, um, before we dive in, we're going to pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word and a chance to look at it. Please help us to understand it and see how it applies to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, we often need a rescuer or a hero. Uh, who will save us? If you are uh, an animal in the ocean that is ill or uh, in danger, often it's the octonauts that will come and save you. They will save. Or if you are one of Farmer Yumi's naughty animals in Adventure Bay, it's going to be the Paw Patrol that come and save you. And uh, maybe you prefer a hero like Spider-Man or Batman, but they will come and save you. Now, who will save the Israelites from this giant Goliath? Now, it's been 40 days, the two armies have been lining up morning on morning, uh, 40 days of preparing, and yet every time the armies are lined up, Goliath comes out and shouts his war cry, and all the Israelites 
flee. <laughs> now, why? Why were they fleeing from a man? Well, did you hear how tall he was? He was nine feet tall. He was, what did it say? Um, six cubits and a span. Now that is taller than your doorframe. So imagine you've invited him to come to tea, not that you would, but he would have to duck to get just through the door. Did you? And the, the tallest man on record was eight foot three and he was a tall, skinny little bean. This man was pure muscle. His armour was, what did it say? 5,000 shekels, just his coat, the front bit. That is, 5,000 shekels is heavier than me. So this man is carrying more than me just on his front. And that's before we talk about his bronze, his bronze? Yes, bronze shin pans, bronze javelin, bronze shield. He was enormous. Now, did you hear it? He was talking about scaly armour. This Goliath is supposed to give us the impression of a huge man a terrifying creature, in fact, a monster. In fact, with the scaly armour, a snake-like monster. He is, even today, we are supposed to quake in our boots in fear of how huge and horrible Goliath was. Now, this has become a problem for the Israelites. 40 days, such that the king has now offered a huge reward. Not just his daughter in marriage, um, and great wealth, but that the man who manages to kill Goliath won't have, none of his family will have to pay taxes. That is the equivalent, being married to his daughter, not paying taxes, being part of the royal family. You're, you're welcomed into the royal family if you kill this man. This. And yet, with this tempting reward, no one in the Israelite army has stepped forward to take Goliath on. And verse 12, we meet David. We're introduced to our hero, David our hero. No, not quite actually. To begin with, he's the youngest of eight sons, that's not a problem, but he's actually not even in the army. The only reason he's gone to the army is that his dad sent him to check up on his three older brothers. Oh. And yet, within the morning of seeing that armies line up, and Goliath come out, it is David who says, no, no, let no one lose heart, your servant, I will go and fight him. Now, what do you think Saul said when David stepped up? Do you think he said, yes, David will save us? No, actually, have a look, he says in verse 33, you're not able to go, you're a young man. Yet, David's reply is wonderful, let me read it to you. I, David says, I have killed the lion and the bear while looking after my father's sheep. The Lord rescued me from the lion and the bear. The Lord will rescue me from the Philistine who will be like the lion and the bear because he has defied the armies of the living God. Did you spot David's motivation? It's not the rewards that King Saul has offered. It's the fact that his opponent, Goliath, is teasing, making fun of God, the living God's armies. This man's making a mockery of God. And this is not okay to David. So Saul dresses David in his best armour to try and match Goliath's armour. And yet, I wonder, are there any pictures of you as a baby walking in your parents' shoes? Or, not really remember it, or any of your siblings walking in parents' shoes? All my girls have been desperate to walk in my shoes. It's not lasted long because the shoes are way too big and they fall over really quickly. And the same is here with David and Saul's armour. He can't wear it, it's too big. He's like, I can't go in these. I'm not used to them, I'm going to fall over. So he goes with five small stones in a bag, in a sling. Okay, let's work out how crazy this matchup is. Now I know you can't read these, but if we made top trumps of Goliath and David, who has the top trump? Well, if we were going to uh, match them up on fighting experience, Goliath has been a in the army for many, many years. Let's give him a score of 100. I mean, David has done some fighting, lions and bears, but nothing in the army. So let's give him 50. Goliath wins. 
Height, Goliath, we've already said, nine foot tall, can't get in the door. David, and even if he was average, six foot, Goliath wins. Uh, age, Goliath's older. David, he's, we're told he's only a young boy, 16 maybe. Goliath wins. Um, armor, Goliath has this hugely impressive bronze armor, shield, spear, um, shin guards, coat of arms, scaly, remember the scaly armor. Basically, he's hugely intimidating. David's armor, he has five stones and a sling. Goliath is insulted, hugely insulted, that David has come, this small shepherd boy with five stones. No armor, he's come to fight me, the mega warrior. What? And yet, David says to the Philistine, read it in verse 45. You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David doesn't come on his own. He doesn't come for his own glory. He comes in the name of the Lord for God's glory. And then what happens? One stone does it, verse 45. He swings his sling, one stone, first shot, straight between the eyes. Knocks the Philistines down. You'd imagine this huge monster of a warrior. Did you see me? Can take a hit. Nay. Straight down, knocks him straight out. What does David do? Runs up, gets Goliath's own sword, kills him, and then chops his head off. Just rabbinical. But what does he do? He's done what the king should do. He's defended his people, and now the king's reward is to count him as part of the king's family. Now it looked nuts, didn't it? 40 days of no one to save the Israelites from Goliath. And yet now we have David who did save. Now we shouldn't be surprised because actually the chapter before this chapter in the Bible, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, God picks David as his next king, even though he's not outwardly impressive. In fact, his dad even left him out in the field still tending the sheep when the prophet came to anoint the new king. He had to ask, don't you have any other sons? Oh, he's not impressive. He's out with the sheep. He's the young one. Yet David was picked. And amazingly, God says, the Lord does not look at things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. David is God's appointed king. He acts in a kingly way, he saves, he defends, he fights for God's glory, not his own. And did you spot it? What was David concerned about? In his heart, he was more concerned about God's glory than his own. This is God's plan, an outwardly unimpressive, yet God-fearing man to be his king to defend, defeat his enemies. Now this king should make us think of another king, another unimpressive man, the Lord Jesus. Unimpressive, in fact he died as a criminal, crucified on a tree. But as he did, he defeated sin and death our biggest enemies. So just a thought this week, if you trust Jesus, are you more concerned about your heart because that's what God looks at than what other people think of your outward appearance? And if you don't trust Jesus, well actually who will say you? Will you trust the Lord Jesus to save you from your biggest enemies? Death. Wasn't that an amazing so story? Cool. What an amazing rescue. I mean, little David killing that huge snake-like giant. I mean, you thought it was weird, me getting rid of a dog. Yeah. But David King Goliath, wow. How unexpected was that? Oh. Now, it'd be really good if we could figure out a way to remember that. Yeah, what can we do? Hmm. Oh. <gasps> 
we do every week? A craft. A craft on the object. Let's do a craft. Oh, is there a CD? Uh, oh, as always. Oh, there's, there's another, another one. CD. Put it Spin. in. Brilliant. Hi, boys and girls. Today, we're going to be painting some stones together um, to help remind us of a lesson that David learned when he went to battle against Goliath. Now, you might remember from the story that David chose five stones. So here are five stones from my garden. Um, and your first task is to go and find five stones. Now, they need to be smooth stones. David chose smooth stones, of course, so that they could fly in the air easily in his sling. We're gonna choose smooth stones so that we can paint them more easily. So once you've washed and dried your stones that you've chosen, then we can begin. Okay, so as well as your stones, you're going to need um, some paint and some pens. I've got Sharpie pens because they show up grey. If you don't have Sharpie's felt tip will do, you might need to just go over text a couple of times but before we do the pen we do the painting um, and again any paint will do um, I've got watercolors um, I've also got these little acrylic paints which are handy um, and the acrylic will generally show up more boldly but the watercolor will show again you might just need a bit more patience and put a couple of layers on um, and let them dry in between layers and you'll also need um, something just to wash your paintbrushes in Okay, so to start things off, we're going to have um, our background colour. Now you can choose to do all five of your stones in one colour, that's fine. Or you might prefer to do each of your stones a different colour. Yeah. I'm going to do each of my stones a different colour. Um, so to get a nice background colour across the whole stone, you want to just work with your paintbrush across hold the top of the stone until it's covered in paint and then we're going to let that paint dry. Now once that paint has dried we're going to come back and we're going to add some text and some detail. Okay so I've painted all my stones now and just waiting for that paint to dry. I've gone for kind of rainbow colours because I'm going to be writing a promise on my stones and rainbows help me to remember about God's promises. Okay, so my background colours have dried nicely now and I can begin adding some more text and detail. Um, now then, you have a choice for your text. You can choose to write one of three different um, messages and reminders. So you could write, the battle is the Lord's, um, to remind you that uh, David said that the battle had already been given into his hands by the Lord, didn't he? So you could write that. You could also write, God will fight for me. It's a reminder. The Bible says that God is our fierce defender and that we do things in his strength, don't we? Or you could write the name of the Lord. So David went up against Goliath and he said to him, you're coming against me with spear and uh, sword and big armory but I come against you in the name of the Lord so the name of the Lord could be a good option too to remind you of the power that is in the name of the Lord now I'm going to write God will fight for me so I am taking a sharpie just writing directly onto the dried paint And once you've written text on all of your stones, you can begin painting in some detail. So you want to take a contrasting colour from your background. So a colour that's quite different from the colour that you've got as your background colour. So this stone is a green one. So my contrasting colour is going to be orange. It's taking a different colour going to add a little bit of detail around the edge so you might want to put a border you might want to do some dots some stripes some zigzags anything you like really I find if you've got a very small paintbrush it can be quite nice just to do a little bit of printing just let the let the brush um, provide a shape for you 
and just work your way around the stone, kind of printing um, the shape of the brush onto the edge, that can be quite effective. If you're using lots of different colours, don't forget to wash your brush, wash and dry your brush in between using the colours, that will make sure that they don't go all murky and strange looking. You'll keep your colours distinctive if you make sure you have a clean brush each time. And there we have it, our five stones with a message to help us remember um, that God is always bigger and stronger than our enemies and that we can do all things in his strength. Now, you might want to keep these stones and put them somewhere where you can see the reminder. Um, then you might make a lovely gift for somebody too. So you might want to give them away to somebody and uh, explain to them um, why it's a precious promise on these stones them too they make a lovely gift. I hope you've enjoyed our craft together and look forward to seeing you soon. Wasn't that a fantastic craft? Such a brilliant craft, I loved it. Yeah, and look we've got these crafts from previous weeks to show you. Okay I'm really hungry now looking at that. I hope they share. Ah. So if you want to do the craft and take a picture of it and maybe send us a few samples. Yeah, send us some pictures to yeah. Big Bible Adventure at EnfieldTown.Church. Yes, and if you've got any questions, well, where should you send them? Big Bible Adventure at EnfieldTown.Church. Yes, fantastic. But you know what, Pete? I've got some questions. What's the question? Well, so, David, David, little David, he slung his stone and he killed Goliath, something you could see. But what do I need rescuing from? I mean, you, know, you say sin, but I can't see it. Yeah. Do I still need rescuing? Really good question, because we can't see it. But you know what? Sin is even scarier than Goliath. Sin's an even bigger enemy than Goliath. Because sin, if you remember, is when we don't listen to God. And because of that, we deserve to be banished, cut off from him. We can't be his friends. And so we need rescuing from that. And that's what God's chosen king has done. He has crushed the snake so we can be rescued and friends with God be with him again. And that is an amazing thing. That is amazing. That is, yeah, I really need to keep that in mind, don't I? We should remember it, which is why I put the craft. Oh, yeah. There's so many good things for us to remember from the last four, well, these four weeks now. So much. Okay, now, do you think we can remember it? Let's give it a shot. Okay. Let's try and do it. Right, right. So, week one. Week one. God is God king. is king because he created the world. Yes, created the world. world. The world. So what do we need to do? We need to listen to him. We need to listen to him. And then the next week, we learned that, oh, the world is spoiled. spoiled because we have sinned, so look to the snake crusher. Oh, yeah. What was after that? Well, there were some promises, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, yeah. God yep. promises. Yep, promises. To fix. To fix the hammering, yep. The, the world. The world. That we. That we. Have spoiled. That we have spoiled. And so believe. Believe. In God's promise. In God's promise. I, I'm not very good at those ones. You might have to keep teaching me that one. Tricky, it? it is. Yeah. Sorry, we've only got one more to remember. One more to remember. Okay. Who. Who can save, save us? us? Who can save us? Who can save us? Uh, uh, let's uh, 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 trust. We need to trust. trust. In God's chosen king. king. That's it. That's right, because God's chosen king is the one who can rescue us. Yes. And we need rescuing. We do need rescuing. Oh, can't wait until next week to learn more. Clap your hands, shout for joy. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Raise his name.
for me Jesus takes away my sin and sets until next week. I mean, now we've got God's chosen king. And his enemy has been defeated. Ah, it's going to be all uphill from here, isn't Only it? get better. I mean, what could go wrong? Nothing. Come on. See you next week. Bye, guys.